What is VR sickness and why do some people seem to suffer it and others don't? Well, the simple answer is VR sickness is just plain old motion sickness. There is something called simulator sickness, which is a little different, but what we generally know as VR sickness is actually just VR motion sickness, and it's pretty much the exact same sort of motion sickness you get if you get car sick or if you get seasick. But what is motion sickness then? Well, it's not your stomach. Contrary to popular belief, it's not actually um, a problem with your stomach. Although there are things you can eat that will help with motion sickness, the actual cause of the problem is your brain. Yes, your brain's broken. Not really. Um, it's essentially your brain getting confused by contradictory signals, by the different senses in your body sending signals that don't match. Predominantly for motion, it's your eyes and your inner ear. I know most people realize that your inner ear is responsible for helping you balance, but what you may not know is it also gives you a sense of movement. If you are moving, your inner ear actually picks that up and sends it to your brain. It's why sometimes you just know that you're moving, even if you can't see anything. And even if, you know, you're, you're not in a vehicle that's obviously moving, maybe it's the windows are closed, maybe it's a very smooth ride, and yet you just get this sensation of movement, that's your inner ear. And whilst there are often other senses involved in, you know, passing information that you are moving to your brain, it's your eyes and your inner ear that are, are the main problems if, for example, you suffer from car sickness. Basically, if you suffer from car sickness and you're sat in the back seat of a car, you can feel you're moving. You can feel you're turning, you can feel you're accelerating, decelerating, you can feel the bumps. But your eyes, your, your vision is filled with objects that are not moving relative to you. The seat in front of you, the roof, the doors, the floor, the seat you're on. Yes, there's a little bit of the, you know, the view from the outside, you know, through the windows that you can see is moving, but much of your vision is filled with stationary objects. And even though you know what's going on, your brain, that little side of your brain that you have no control over, doesn't. It looks like you're not moving, but it feels like you are moving, and your brain is in a bit of a panic. You will feel less sick if you sit in the front seat of the car and just stare forward, because of course then you're not looking at um, as many objects inside the car. You've still got those objects in your peripheral vision, but if you focus on the horizon, you see more of the movement and it's more consistent with your with the feelings you're getting from your inner ear. With VR motion sickness, it's pretty much the same thing, only the reverse in a way. The senses are reversed. If you step into a game like Fallout 4 VR and you stand still and you're looking around and you're all very impressed and then you start to move forward using the controller, but you are actually stood still in real life, what actually happens now is your inner ear is saying, I'm stood still, but your eyes are sending information to your brain saying, nope, we're moving forward. And your brain is once again unsure as to which of your senses to believe. It, there's this conflict. It's the opposite way round to car sickness, but it's the same effect. Incidentally, even though we call it VR sickness, you can get the same effect in a normal flat screen game. A, a, a standard first person game can give you the same motion sickness. Obviously, it's just nowhere near as intense because of course, when you're in VR, the entire world around you is moving. Whereas when you play a normal game, it's just a very small window. Um, you may find that for certain games that have head bob, you might find that a little nauseating because again, now it's adding a little more realism to the visual movement that's conflicting with your inner ear. Um, you may find that if you use a really big screen, it actually makes you feel more sick than if you use a small screen, because again, um, you're filling your vision with movement, which conflicts with your inner ear. Whereas if you've got a small screen, you're, you're still able to see the fact that you're sat in a room. And again, it's not your conscious brain, it's, it's your unconscious brain. So even though you always know you're stationary and you're sat at your desk or you're stood in a VR, um, in, in a room with a VR helmet on, your, your conscious knows this, your subconscious doesn't. And that's, that's the problem. 
It's the fact that it's trying to manage things for you in the background. That's a terrible description of how the brain works, but we'll run with it. Now, this is the point where you might be going, yes, but why? I don't understand why it is that we would feel this. Why is our brain doing this? Now, I have read an explanation for this, but I am not an expert on this. I am not a doctor. You, you, you may be surprised to find out. And this is something I read on the internet, so it could be complete BS, but it sounds about right. Um, what I have read is it's due to your brain thinking you've been poisoned. When your senses don't match, if, you're, if your vision starts to sway and swim or you, you feel off balance, you know, your inner ear starts sending weird signals and you start falling over because you're off balance, it's because you've been poisoned. It's because something has affected you and the body's natural reaction is to, well, essentially, you know, abandon ship, evacuate the stomach. And it's as simple as that. It's your body's defense mechanism for something that it thinks may be a threat. And again, it's not you, your conscious brain, it's that unconscious side of your brain that you have no control over. And that is basically it. Some people are more sensitive to it than others. Some people seem to really not have any problem. Um, you know, they can get in a car and drive for hours and hours and hours or be a passenger. Motion sickness tends to only affect people who are passengers. I I've never really heard of anyone getting motion sick while driving a car. That would have to be a very acute form of motion sickness. But some people are just affected by this. And it's a lot more people than you think think, especially in VR, because VR is such a massive disconnect between your sight and your inner ear. There is this massive difference between what your brain is being told that when it hits you, it hits you hard. You can get used to it. The more you do it, the more your brain begins to adapt, the more your brain starts to go, okay, now we've had this before and 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 it was okay. All right, I, I, I'll, I'll be a little less... Uh, hard on the stomach this time. And so, you know, I mean, I've gotten very used to VR for prolonged periods. I'm also taking ginger capsules, which are supposed to help. I don't know if that's a placebo, um, but it, it definitely seems to help. So you can get used to it. From what I've observed, kids are really quite immune to it, even though they may suffer motion sickness in cars. It's, I think they adapt to VR quite quickly. I say that, my, my, my kids have only used it for um, a couple of minutes here and there, just showing them things because they thought it was cool, and they didn't seem to have any problems whatsoever. In fact, I had to drag the damn thing off their heads. So, I, I, you can get used to it. Certain people get used to it faster, but just just know it is, it is not due to your stomach being upset or being weak. It is just your brain being wired a certain way and you're going to need to rewire it by exposure to VR if you want to get used to VR. But you may not even need to get used to it because they are working on technologies like galvanic vestibular stimulation, which is a fancy way of saying they're going to send signals to your inner ear to simulate movement. There'll, there'll be a sort of headset, maybe it'll be your headphones. I've seen devices that sit on the neck and then have something behind your ears that will actually give you the feeling of moving. So, you know, if you're in a flight game or you're in a car game and you turn a corner, you will feel the movement as well as see it. That will, of course, reduce, if not completely eliminate, the motion sickness. I mean, when I first heard about this, I thought it would probably be for seated games only because the idea of having something um, send signals to my inner ear while I'm standing sounds a little dangerous. But I did see someone in a simulation, I think it was a climbing simulation, who was using this and they were not falling over. So I may be wrong. It may actually be for every game. But the technology is being worked on and it could completely alleviate the problem, which would, of course, be amazing. And that's it, basically. Um, it's just plain old motion sickness. It's plain old motion sickness and it has nothing to do with your stomach, everything to do with your eyes and your inner ear basically fighting each other, not literally, but you, you know, you get the idea. And 
there are ways around it and there will be more ways around it in the future. So, you know, the future of VR is pretty bright and possibly filled with slightly less vomit. <laughs>